The 9.30 morning train panted into the city station, pulled up and set down and picked up cargo, humans, quadrupeds and inanimate objects. A young woman in a large hat and flying imitation ostrich feather, with a hat box in one hand and a leather bag in the other, paused inquisitively beside a little group of men standing by a cattle van, where something appeared to be taking place. What's the row? she inquired in her somewhat shrill tones. And with the bold courage of an original mind, silly old cow, won't lie down whacking it, answered one of the men between his pipe and teeth. Carrie insinuated herself between him and his companion, a little greasy man with a gleam of lazy enjoyment in his pale eyes. From her position she caught a confused picture of cattle packed together on the floor of the van with one animal, one alone, standing stubbornly upright. A porter was bringing a knotted thong down on the sanity hide with all his force of his arm. Once or twice he paused to mop his brow with a grimy red handkerchief. You ought to be ashamed of yourselves, cried Carrie, wincing as another thwack fell on the back of the stupidly patient animal. Men, aren't you? with a word of sarcasm in the inquiry. The little group laughed, but rather uneasily. Carrie was young and pretty, and with her scorn, counted for something. Why doesn't he lie down then, inquired one. What arm does it do standing, chirped Carrie. The porter drew a quick breath and mopped his brow once more. None, he said, ironically. Only it might kick the other's brains out. I never saw anything like women for talking about what they don't under. Are you going on this train, miss? Inquired the guard. Well, hurry up. Hurry up, we can't wait all day. As she moved forward in search for a compartment. Hurry up yourself, she retorted with the, irrita with the irritability coming from too much sympathy. She was tired, too, with the struggle of carrying luggage along crowded subways, where every other individual was a fat man with a large gold watch chain or a comfortable looking dowager with a, her umbrella placed in a convenient position for breaking ribs. The guard merely smiled, pushed her onto the hot, packed compartment and waved his flag, murmuring something about suffragettes. As the train moved slowly forward, she inspected the rack, as if calculating what amount of weight it would hold without burying the dwellers below. A pilgrim's basket full of overflowing, which had assuredly been sat upon to gain so much, a heavy portmanteau belonging to the commercial traveller in the corner, and divers parcels already occupied it. She accomplished her design of finding room her things, but in stowing them safely trod upon the corn of the woman with the purple veil through which her face glowed like a rising sun. Don't mention it, she said in a, pa in a painted voice as Carrie apologised, but her eyes said other things. Why didn't she keep her feet out of the way, thought Carrie. Good Lord, I'm having a bad start. This comes a see in the new moon through glass. A working man in the opposite corner awkwardly offered to carry his seat. And when she had got seated and was in better temper, she looked out of the window for a few minutes. The train was passing along by a reservoir. And the many sheets of water intersected by green banks, shimmering in the sunshine. A number of children waving their hands from their post on a fence filled Carrie's heart with a benignant influence and some wall that had hammered her in spiritual fell down. I hope I didn't hurt you bad, she said, turning suddenly to the purple veiled woman. The woman in turn became affable, informing Carrie that she was going to stay with her daughter in Preston, who was married and had three children but wanted to go to the mill. She had asked her to come and be a housekeeper and she had not been well lately. The doctor said it was her heart. She had sold her household goods. 
the day before and felt it very much. She had always wanted to die on her own heartstone, but the Lord knew best. She finished in a troubled way, as if she weren't quite sure of it. Good.